I must practice the language of this new dimension, which I shall conquer and plunder. Blastar, this beastly creature has been a constant enemy of the Fantastic Four. The supervillain with a name being representative of destruction, Blastar is one of Marvel's best written characters. Running against the Fantastic Four, sometimes under the alias Living Bombast, he is actually the member and king of the Belurians community. Belurians are an alien race inhabiting planet Belur. To the credit of Stan Lee, Belur was a part of an area famously dubbed as the Negative Zone, a universe made up of antimatter that, unlike our universe, has already started contracting and is a recurring mention in the Marvel Universe. Blastar was merciless and he ruled his planet with those exact instincts, leading to a whole rebellion against him. Eventually, he was removed from his position of power and forbidden from returning to the negative zone altogether. His punishment was to remain drifting in space all on his own and escaping was not an option until he had help. Whether or not he got help or how he obtained it and what followed his denouncement from Balur is what we seek to shed light on today. Before we go into our explanation, however, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. And let's begin. Blastar, criminalistic background. Blastar is unsurprisingly a big menace. He not only made the lives of the Fantastic Four quite hard, but he also made enemies with no filters, it seems. While he was in the negative zone the first time around, he got a chance to escape with Mr. Fantastic, who was also stuck there alongside one inhuman Triton. And he did so through a portal. After having escaped, he teamed up with Sandman, who is one of the Fantastic Four's biggest enemies. Their next battle against the Four sent Plastar back to the negative zone, where he started to rule Balur again, this time focusing on the expansion of territory. It was on that expedition that he made an enemy out of Annihilus, another monarch in the negative zone who possessed the Cosmic Controlled Rod, a device that permitted the holder to control matter and energy, as well as slowing the aging process. The rod was at one point seized by Blastar, but in true superhero style, the Fantastic Four had him surrender it soon enough. Being stranded in the negative zone wasn't a one-time experience for Blastar, though. There was a second time. This time around, he got access to Olympia, a place that the Eternals, an extraterrestrial race of humanoids, who were temporarily displaced into the negative zone, called home. Upon recovery, Blastar destroyed the Eternals by atomizing them and subverting their molecular control through his concussive flashes of tremor. Blastar was only put under control when the Avengers came to rescue the Eternals and their disintegration was undone when they regained control over their molecular arrangement as Blastar was defeated once again. Blastar had evil contributions to make to Earth as well when he came via a portal made by scientists to research the negative zone. At that stage, he fought against a group of brave young individuals called the New Warriors. They were smart enough to use Blastar's own map of the negative zone to finally cause him to be stranded on an abandoned planet in the zone. Blastar, the first comic appearance. Way back in 1961, the Marvel timeline unraveled to us that Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, had battled against Sandman and as a result was hurled into the negative zone. Issue 62 of the Fantastic Four series takes off from this point as Mr. Fantastic is rapidly moving towards the core of the zone, an area which is labelled explosive as that is where antimatter and positive matter come together. The impending doom upon the family of the Fantastic Four only sees a ray of hope in Crystal, a member of the Inhumans who were a species of changed humans created as a result of the alien race's experimentation on primordial humans. Crystal says that she and her dog Lockjaw could perhaps help. The panel then shifts to the zone again, where Mr. Fantastic caught sight of some alien beings dropping off a caged shipment on the asteroid he himself was on one side of. 
Needless to say, this asteroid was on its way to be destroyed. Right after Crystal was seen asking for help from a fellow inhuman Triton who had exceptional swimming abilities. The plan was explained as Triton swam out of the zone and managed to reach Mr. Fantastic. While their backs were turned and they attempted to escape through the portal, Triton came from the package that aliens had dumped on the other side of the asteroid sprung open to reveal Blastar. He went unnoticed during the transfer through the portal and followed the other two to Earth. As the Fantastic Four were reunited and decided to go out to celebrate, Blastar followed them and made his mission to conquer Earth. As he was climbing out, he made contact with Sandman, who he was initially intent upon physically fighting. Sandman then revealed his desire to work together alongside Blastar against the Fantastic Four. Blastar beating the mighty Thor In the 270th issue of Thor, Blastar proved himself to be quite a force against Thor. He was in no way as powerful, but he had figured out a way to keep Thor at his worst levels of strength, that is, depriving him of Mjolnir. He certainly did not know how bad it could get if Thor was without his famous hammer. But he certainly knew enough to determine that without Mjolnir, Thor would not fight as strongly. However, it is significant to note here that even before Thor was deprived of Mjolnir, Blastar was being a thorn in his path. The latter managed to conquer Thor, deprive him of Mjolnir and projected his entire being to a dark back alley. Thor managed to disguise himself as Dr. Blake and told Blastar that Thor had escaped by jumping over the fence. As Dawn ran to Tony Stark in search of help, after obtaining his cane from a gang on the street and meeting Stiltman for some questions to be answered, he described Blastar's use of force to be quite powerful and damage inflicting. In the three fights that Thor and Blastar have had so far, despite Thor's immense strength, Blastar had had an upper hand. In fact, Thor's dependence on his hammer and friends like Tony Stark have only gone on to show how capable Blastar actually is of causing long-term damage to an enemy. Blastar, what makes him near invincible? It is quite obvious that Blastar carries the genetic advantages served upon him, being one of the members of the Belurian race, his planet's inhabitants. His superior physical strength, agility and other powers have given him the ability to destroy city after city. He was in fact known to have defeated the likes of the five original X-Men at one point. The Fantastic Four remains his biggest enemy. He even ended up having the superior hand over the biggest superheroes we know of, Captain Marvel, Thor, etc. Multiple members of Nova too have left him absolutely unfazed. At the massive height of 6 feet 6 inches and weighing more than 500 pounds, this giant man has immense strength that allows him to lift weights as heavy as 75 to 80 tons. Blastar also seems to have advanced powers to control the release of toxins causing fatigue in the body, as he is seen capable of fighting for hours on end with no visible signs of tiredness. This, of course, is evidence of his strength to endure more than an average human being and have remarkably high stamina. Speed is something that need not be elaborated here because it is projected in every comic panel Blastar has been a part of. From resisting machine gun shells, bullets of quite a high caliber, the strongest physical attacks during hand-to-hand -hand combat, extreme temperatures and falls from huge heights, Blastar is the living example of being able to withstand attacks like no other. His lung capacity is advanced as well, as he can hold his breath for quite a long time and sustain himself for long periods on little to almost no food, water, air or sleep. Blastar's biggest strength is his immediate weapon, the ability to generate explosive energy that is pretty violent in nature and can cause immense damage. It is akin to nuclear energy being blasted out of his fingertips and he can control and direct it as he pleases. In fact, that control is what enables him to fly at high speeds and use other equipment to blast off entire planets if he wishes to. Now Blastar destroys you all! You're not the only one with Blastar. Blastar in the animated media. 
The years of 1967, 1978 and 1994 are significant in terms of Blastar's appearance against the Fantastic Four when the latter's TV series was released. He had a cameo in Spider-Man and his amazing friends, but his next major appearance was against Hulk in Hulk and the Agents of Smash. As per usual, he is seen creating absolute chaos before the appearance of Iron Man therein. Once defeated by Hulk and She-Hulk joining forces, Blastar goes back to the negative zone only to appear again a few episodes later and paralyzing several Smash agents atop Hoover Dam with the help of snakes from the zone. He continues to appear as a roadblock in several following episodes as well. With Spider-Man, Blastar is next seen in the Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors, where he is put up against the likes of Captain America, Red Hulk, Iron Fist and of course Spider-Man. He managed to remove Red Hulk from the Capture the Flag game that they were playing before he was ousted himself. Blastar's presence in the world of video games is since 2005, when the first Fantastic Four movie was adapted into a game. He was not part of the movie though. In the game, he is shown as an imprisoned being who attempted to evade the Earth but failed. He managed to escape from captivity during a power outage and cause further wreckage. Blastar closing in. Annihilus is the only being in the negative zone who is strong enough to oppose him and take over. Blastar came back to this universe to help in the battle against the Annihilation Wave. He also came back to help the Kree, a race of blue-skinned humanoids, militaristic in nature and inhabitants of planet Hala. He helped them in their battle against the Phalanx, another humanoid race. However, it is not known whether he survived or not after being stepped on by a giant Phalanx during the battle. It was later revealed that he survives and the battle is then taken forward in the War of Kings. He then conquers the negative zone and goes ahead calling himself the King. Currently, he is on a mission to invade, conquer and conform the Earth to his own whims and fancies. He is also in control of the ceded territories, a region of the Kree Empire. Blastar also campaigns to take over other Kree worlds which are currently ruled by Queen Medusa and the Inhumans. Marvel deemed Blastar important enough to have a recurring presence in their storylines. And it goes without saying that this character commands attention with his mere presence. With a history of defeating superheroes like Thor and others on multiple occasions, it is quite interesting to see his villainous character arc remain intact throughout. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is yet to explore the layers of this intriguing character and hopefully we get to see this terrifying monster in his true glory, something that is long due and highly anticipated. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.